So here we're going to solve the second question. We're using the same data as we did in question one. So we can see the same table as we saw before, and therefore we use the similar Excel spreadsheet. So what we're now supposed to do is we are supposed question one supposed to calculate the correlation coefficient, and we know what the solution should be negative. 0.8366. It also says we should do the calculations by hand, and of course you should, but that doesn't make very good television. So therefore what I will do is I will solve it in Excel but show you exactly what the steps are that are needed. So here we see our price and our share. We'll get back to that spreadsheet very soon. So how do we calculate the correlation. Let's uh, start with part one here. You know the correlation between the two random variables is going to be calculated by calculating the covariance between the price and the market share. Let's call that I, uh, M. So the correlation between PI and MI divided by the square root of the product of the two variances. So we have variances, variance of pi times the variance of mi. So these are the terms we need to calculate the covariance between the two and the two individual variances. And then we just need to, to plug them in. Now the variance you, uh, you should know, let me, let me just write it. So we'll plug values in here once we get there and then we get the solution but first what do we need for the sample variance so the sample variance s square of p is going to be 1 over n minus 1 because we are using a sample times the sum times the sum of pi minus p bar and that squared and the same for the variance for mi so I'm not going to write that down and we need the sample covariance for p and m we label that s p m and that's going to be again 1 over n minus 1 and then the sum of pi minus p bar times mi minus m bar. So let me just do a little side calculation with these factors. We have a, oh, I'll just do that here, we have something in the numerator and something in the denominator. In the numerator we will have that factor 1 over n minus 1. 1 over n minus 1. And in the denominator, you can see we have the variance, and the sample variance has a factor 1 over n minus 1. So we will have the square root here of factor 1 over n minus 1, then some calculation, and then for the second variance, we'll again have 1 over n minus 1 times something else coming on. So here, down here we will have 1 over n minus 1 squared underneath the square root. Then we take the square root, that means we will just get 1 over n minus 1. So we can basically cancel 1 out and cancel the square root out. And that means we have 1 over n minus 1, both in numerator and denominator, that means they cancel each other out. So really all we need is the sums. Right, we need in the numerator, we need this sum here. And in the denominator, we need this sum times the sum for the m variable, and then we need to take the square root. So that will just simplify our calculations slightly. That means less uh, opportunities to make mistakes. So what we needed is p minus p bar. We already calculated that from question one. And we need p minus 
pbar squared. We need that for the variance. Let's first think of what we what we need. And then we need m minus m bar and m minus m minus m bar squared. And we need p minus p bar times m minus m bar. And these are all the, the guys we need. We need this one here for the variance of p, this one, let me just make sure we can see the full title. This one here we need for the variance of m, and this one we need for the covariance between p and m. So that is simple, that is just a square of this. And m minus m bar is m, we have that here, the market share, minus the average value. Oh, I haven't calculated that yet, so let's do that first. I'll just copy that across here. Of course, if you have 10 companies, the average market share ought to be 0.1. Actually, there's no need to calculate that, but there we go. So we need to fix that as previously. Copy this down. It's always worth checking that you calculate what you want. That's fine. So here we now need the square value. So we'll do this. Okay, and we need p minus p bar times m minus m bar. That's this times this and we do that for all columns so now we need to calculate sums this one here is the sum so let me just copy that across so what did we say we needed we needed the sum of the square deviation that was for the p and for the m and the sum of the product of the two deviation deviation so let me just highlight where they are It's the yellow shaded fields, which are the ones we need. And how did we calculate the covariance? We had the sum of the product of the deviations divided by the square root of the product of the other two sums. That were the sums used for the variance calculations. So let's hold our pref. And indeed, what we get is negative 0.8366, which is exactly what we were hoping for, or what we were told was the solution. So let's just transcribe a few, a few values across the sum of the covariance. The sum we used in the covariance was negative 2.2. So that already means we know there is a negative covariance because all the variances are positive. And the terms for the variances were the sums 127.6. 127.6 times 0.0542. All point oh five four two is that correct? Let me check. That's right. All point oh five four two, and the result was negative all point eight three six six six. Okay, so that is part one solved. Part two. Two. So, what we want. In the second question is we want to estimate a regression line. So here's y as a function of x. Remember y is the market share, x are the petrol prices. So we have let's use instead of y and x use our p and m we used before and we used p and m. Okay, so we continue using that. 
So the marker chair is a function of the price. And we know we need some error term here. We want these estimates now. So let's recall how we got sample estimates for these two guys, the intercept and the slope. Uh, we had our sample estimate for the slope was the covariance of mi and pi divided by the variance of pi. And then we also wanted the sample estimate for the intercept, a hat, that was the sample mean of the dependent variable, that was m. So we have m bar minus the estimated slope, p hat times p bar the sample value, sample mean for the price. So before we calculate that, let's do the little trick with the 1 over n minus 1s again. For the covariance calculation, we have a 1 over n minus 1. So there's a 1 over n minus 1 in the numerator of our b hat calculation. And variance of pi, now the sample variance we have that here, also has 1 over n minus 1 as a factor. So these two guys will cancel out again. So all we have is this sum in the numerator and this sum in the denominator. And of course we've already calculated them. Now remember this sum was negative 2.2. And what was the sum for the variance of pi? That was, uh, we had that up here, no, sorry, up here we had that sum that was 127.6. 127.6. So let's just calculate what we get here. So we have this guy divided by this guy, negative 0.01724. And that is, of course, the solution which we were told is the correct one. So negative 0.01724. 7, 2. So what about the A hat? We need the average market share. We know that is 0 0.1 minus our slope. So that's minus minus 0 0.0172 times the average price. Now the average price, we'll just have to check on the spreadsheet again, was 134.8. One three four point eight, and the solution here is uh, here we go. That was the average market share minus the estimated slope times the average price two point four two four one. Again, this is of course the uh, solution we were told was the right solution. So let me just complete the writer 2.4241. So now the third question. Is this, this is one for thinkers. Suppose that every price rises uniformly by two pence. Assuming that the market share stay the same, write down what the regression market share on price would now yield for values of A and B. Now, we're going to start tackling this by thinking a little graphically. So here's a little scatter diagram. And we basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to use a few points. It had a negative relationship, so perhaps we should 
relative relationship here in our, in our graph. Now if I fit a line of best fit in here, it's going to look most likely something like this. So now imagine that all points increase by a certain price. Basically what we have is we have price here and market share here. It really doesn't like my M's. So now if each price moves up by a certain amount, what do we think is going to happen to the regression line? In fact, it will turn out it will just move up by exactly the same amount. So the same shift we, we have for each observation, we will find the regression line to have. So the slope will remain unchanged. And what happens to the intercept? Now remember, so we said the slope will stay the chain will stay the same. So our new intercept, let's call it a hat new, is going to be okay, m m bar. Now the average market share is not going to change, so that's going to be the same as the previous m bar minus b hat. We just say, said that this will remain unchanged, so it's going to be the same we calculated above, times the average price. Now that is going to be new because it's going to be 2p larger. So here we can just calculate, have a new calculation that's going to be 0.1 minus minus 0.0172 times a 2p higher average price, that's 136.8. So let's just go back to our calculation. We just replace the average here with 136.8. What we get is 2.4586. So the solution here is going to be 2. 4586. Is that correct? 2.4586. That's right. So that is the solution to part three.